The Senate, through its Committee on Judiciary, Legal and Human Rights Matters, is declining comment on the legality of freezing bank accounts owned by hashtag NSAS protesters and promoters. The attack on hashtag NSAS promoters and protesters has sparked outrage across the country and has been condemned by lawyers, activists and civil groups. Joining us to discuss on the clampdown on NSAS promoters is additional Ogulana, a legal practitioner. Uh, you are welcome to Newsday. Additional. All Nigerians. Good. Uh, the embargo placed on the bank account, uh, information has it that DSS ordered this, and they said it was based on intelligence information that were being used with or without their knowledge by both international and local observers, uh, sorry, conspirators. What's your sense of this information from the DSS? <clears throat> what's, 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 what, what's its sense that the DSS wants to make of this? What, assuming the DSS is right, that the um, protest itself is sponsored. What's wrong with sponsoring the protest? The, the question should be how is the protest executed? Is the protest um, peaceful? Is it legal? Is it within constitutional bounds? That is what is important. After all, when politicians organize their rally, they sponsor a rally, they bring people uh, to rallies, they give them uh, stop transport, logistics, they give them food, they give them funds. So I uh, had some uh, interesting stories that uh, it, it funds came from uh, some opposition figures and all that. And so, uh, what should be our concern is that uh, these protests, the intendment, are they legal? Are they legal? And are they real? People complaining about police brutality. Was it phantom? Was it an invention? Or was it real? Is it true that there's police brutality? Is it true that there is a culture of widespread impunity in the country's system of government, not just limited to the police, even the private sector? Is it right to keep quiet in your own land of birth where you are being oppressed? These are the issues. Thank you, Mr. Ogunlana. Let me ask you, because the president of the Nigerian Bar Association put out something, a post on Twitter about four days ago, Lumide Akpata, and he said in a Twitter post, lawyers are not smiling about what's been going on after the NSARS protest. DJ Switch goes into hiding after receiving phone threats. Mo Odele's passport is seized and she cannot travel. And Rinu Oduala, et al., accounts frozen by the CBN. He goes further to say this was not the deal. Do do you share similar views and what advice do you have for those that are, that are currently in positions where the federal government is clamping down on them and a lot of them seemingly cannot understand why? I share the, the perspective of the president of the Nigerian Bar Association. Lawyers are trained to uh, think on the side of what constitutes freedom and liberty within the law. And why do you ban people <clears throat> from traveling? For what? What's the offense? Is, is, is that a terroristic act of organizing, organizing or supporting a demonstration that has been adjudged uh, peaceful all the time it was in full flight? Uh, when you freeze people's account, what is the criminality it will suggest? that what the government is trying to do is to say that when you protest against us, it's a criminal action. And no, no lawyer, uh, however partisan, can in all sincerity support that kind of a thing. That's not the deal. That can't be the deal. Uh, we say that we uh, operate under uh, constitutional democracy. And at any rate, the, the, this regime came on the platform of change. That things, and when we talk of change, I thought everybody was of the view that's going to be a positive change, great improvement in times of economy, in times of uh, respect for rule of law, uh, and regard for constitutionalism. So that cannot be the deal. And what we have seen 
is uh, a creation and increment uh, of uh, a climate of, uh, of uh, fear, if not terror, a concern about personal liberty, uh, that government has gone more oppressive, more restrictive, and stripping uh, uh, citizens of the rights that normally accrue to them by the status of their citizenship and what they are entitled to under the law. That cannot be the deal. I agree with Tolumi Diakwata. Well, that may not be the deal, and lawyers may not be smiling, but there are reports that the CBN, that's the Central Bank of Nigeria, also obtained an ex parte order to freeze the accounts of about 20 individuals and organizations uh, related to the NSAS protest. What would you say was the urgency that the CBN would claim or that the court saw in granting this ex parte order instead of putting the defendants on notice? Yes, and normally, uh, I, normally I can't see the urgency. In fact, the issue of um, the grant of uh, ex parte application is being a lot of huge concern, even to the judiciary itself. And many of the conferences that judges have been attending, they have been urged upon by the controlling authorities, that is the chief justice of uh, the states and the chief justice of Nigeria, to be very, very uh, circumspect in the grant of application of um, ex parte, because ordinary ex parte application you don't, the victim or the other side don't get to hear about it. And uh, like you said, where's the agency? I should, I should think that when you bring an application like this, uh, you will have done some preliminary investigation. But when you are now asking for 90 days, and at 10 rate, it's always, it appears to me to be in bad faith. Because you can't approbate and reprobate at the same time, you set up a yeah, a panel of inquiries to look into the issues thrown up by the NSAS protest and uh, representatives of youth uh, on this panel only for uh, that particular interest group for them to be, uh, let me say, uh, the focus of criminal investigation and possible, and possible prosecution. And you can see, uh, I think, Garba Shehu uh, standing up the other day, like I think yesterday or so, that they are going to be dealt with, they are going to be dealt with. I don't think it is right in politics. I don't think it is right in law. It looks a bit, if I not a bit, heavily oppressive. And it uh, seems to me a combination of uh, both uh, executive rascality and judicial carelessness. I, I, I think, uh, even though the, there is a window, uh, of opportunity for a reversal of that because if you look at the ruling, it said that well if you are dissatisfied you can come uh, you can come back to court to argue the case. Uh, but that order ought not to have been made at all or if made if made at all be something like two weeks and not and not uh, and not ninety days. Uh, it's right. also alarming. Now that you have raised the issue uh, additional the last time the panel could not sit because one of the youth on the panel uh, was also affected in this issue of uh, account. Have you discussed with her and what's the next line of action for you representing the NSAS uh, protesters at the panel and for her too? Can I get the question again, please? You are representing the NSAS, uh, the legal counsel to the NSAS protesters. I'm correct. Uh, what's the next line of action for you? Have you discussed with her? I mean, the panel couldn't sit because herself and Temito, I think Rino didn't appear on the panel because of this issue. Have you discussed with her what's your next line of action for you and for her? I've not discussed <clears throat> directly with her. I didn't get my instruction as counsel from her. But of course, uh, the sudden cessation of the sitting of the panel uh, was caused by the overreach of the federal government in this matter. And so, what's the way forward? I should like to advise the government that caused this uh, problem to solve the problem, because the narrative does not favor them now. Everybody is thinking them a huge joke. You can't set a panel, and like I told the panel that day, I said that 
uh, it is the judiciary that has been embarrassed, it is the panel that has been embarrassed and directly, and it's the legal profession that it has been embarrassed generally. But most important, I didn't say that, but the fact is that it's the government that has embarrassed itself. So they should find a solution is to begin to appear or to suggest reasonably so and strongly so that probably they don't want this panel that, uh, that they have set up by themselves and uh, that the Lagos State government has sent its representatives as that turn here to assure the panel that they are committed to the purpose and intent of that particular panel as to unravel uh, the issue at Lekki as well as to uh, make recommendation as per the restitution as regards the abuses by SARS operatives. Probably the government, as it is now, probably the government does not want this panel to sit down. They don't want the truth. That's what the average Nigerian reasonably and logically believes. So I would advise the government uh, to do the needful not only to uh, ensure that that order is lifted against Irinu and uh, Oduala, but against everybody so that we can move forward. What, like, you, like uh, somebody said here, yeah, what's the agency? What's the seriousness? Is that, what, what, was it the terroristic act? What act? What, what happened? And this is how government itself uh, in Nigeria sometimes heat up the polity by, 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 by themselves. I mean, if you are the head of a town, your, your purpose should not be to see to the scattering of the community, but to build it up. I can't see how this action of freezing the account of NSAS uh, protesters or their promoters or their supporters, or even the latest outrage of arresting somebody, how that can promote the growth of the community in the direction of democracy. Thank you, Mr. Ogunlana. Let me ask you now about reports that came in yesterday. We had received reports that DJ Switch, who was at the Lekki Toll on the night of the 20th of October 2020, had appeared before a parliamentary committee in Canada to give her testimony. It's not confirmed yet as to whether she has seeked asylum, um, but that, of course, is the assumption given the reports that came in yesterday. What does this mean for for Nigeria. What are the implications here? That's what I'm saying. When you create a climate of terror, when you create or encourage an environment of fear as a government, uh, what you do in the international scene is that you are pulling yourself down. If the young lady has indeed a cross border, and has appeared before the Canadian Parliament, or has not even crossed, but by Zoom, by whichever way, it, if this has happened, how could that be a positive thing for the uh, government of Nigeria? It's not right. And look, um, the issue of uh, psychological intimidation of Nigerians is real. Many of the, my clients are intimidated the parents are even part of the pressure on them that don't go out there, don't go and show up yourself, uh, don't go and look, let's just nurse our wounds and all that. And so people are saying that uh, it's a lie, uh, nobody got hurt or got died, nobody died and all that. They really don't know the reality. The average Nigerian is conservatively afraid, is timorous. And you find a situation when the person who wants to stand up and speak up to Soros, okay, you find people around him say, oh, you are risking your life. Even only yesterday, uh, in my chambers, I just stepped out, a fellow just across them and said, oh, you are the lawyer who brought people to the panel. Uh, they have been arresting people. Are you sure they are not going to arrest uh, those people? That's just, that's just the feeling. And that's not good for Nigeria for Putin, uh, to be practicing democracy and to say that we have the constitutional, uh, constitutionalism at play. That's not good at all. And government will have to watch it. Okay. Uh, you've clearly inferred the mixed messaging from the government and its true intentions in actually finding um, justice for victims of police brutality uh, by setting up the panel. So let me ask you, as the legal counsel for the NSAS protesters in Lagos, uh, do you have any hope whatsoever in the panel that has been set up at all? Ordinarily, 
for SARS, for SARS, for SARS uh, related abuses, I have no problem. Look, that panel is sound. Like I told the panel, if I do not know anybody on that panel, I know the leadership. I know Honorable Justice Doris Opoobi as very sound, very firm, as uh, somebody who is very fair-minded, and it was without blemish. All uh, more than almost 20 or more than 20 years in the judicial service in Lagos. Uh, but uh, the thing and the proceedings so far, to my mind, has been fair, has been quite balanced so far. But uh, when I look at the 20, is it 200 million that the, that the governor has put down? That 200 million era can go nowhere in, in satisfying, uh, by way of restitution, of the hurt or the damage done by to people who have been injured or who have been killed or who have had their properties um, uh, misappropriated or confiscated by SARS, by the police. So uh, ordinarily, yes, I, I have uh, as per SARS. Now on the issues of lucky shooting, the, the action of government uh, does not seem to support that kind of uh, high optimism in respect of that one, government does not even have the record. I'm talking of Lagos State government or any other government does not have the record of even um, um, following up on white papers issued by judicial panel. And Lagos State government has set up some panels before, and uh, they do not even follow their recommendation. Like the lucky tree based on something, you know what happened there. And they said, do not take this land. Yet yeah, Lagos State Government just ignored it. They said, yes, we see it. We see your recommendation. But they do not follow up. So even on this one, you can see what I would call anki panki. I could, I could see that even when this um, particular panel will have done very well and done justice, if it's justice that's not comfortable to the government of Lagos State or to the federal government or to the ruling party, it might be difficult for them to want to follow it through. But then if they refuse, that's another basis for another round of agitation. And we are always in support of agitation. It is lawful. Once it is constitutional and is peaceful, if you do not agitate, you stagnate. All right, Deshna, let me take you back again to the issue of DSS. It also says that DG, the DG of the SS, who had monitored the protest, advised the presidency to quickly accede to the demands of the protesters because it got real-time information that some unidentified persons had infiltrated them and wanted to use the protest to instigate the removal of the president from the office. This is from the DSS. What, what can we make of that? Any time when you have um, popular protests, you find that the management or people in authority generally being defensive and generally being mischievous. I'm not in a position to uh, maybe ascribe mischief to the part this part in this particular in um, um, situation or the information by the DSS chief, but it is expected you have the responsibility of providing a security. If he has information like that, he should do. He should know well enough how to organize security to abort it. To abort it is not by saying, oh, don't do, don't do protest again. It's a blackmail on us. Uh, if, if you have the information, you that have that information will have, the, will have the opportunity and you have the powers of the state to ensure that those who might have infiltrated are not allowed to carry out what they wanted to do. Hoodlums are different from, pro from, from protesters, and you could see that when, if, 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 when you look at this particular protest that you are talking about, all in its entirety, it was peaceful. Problem began when it was uh, some funny characters supported by government itself or by the state, or at least permitted. I'm talking of uh, thugs, hoodlums, armed ones who attacked uh, protesters in Lagos and in Abuja in open glare, and nothing was done about that. It was about a day or two days later after the failure of that kind of intrusion that we have the 
incidents of the electric shooting. And strangely enough, you find that on Tuesday, 28th, in the, in the afternoon or even in the morning, they had been trouble in Lagos, in some parts of Lagos. The army did not go there. Uh, Orile, around 11 or so, at the police station was attacked. The, 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 the army was, did not go there. We had, there was problem in Alakpere. Far away from the scenes of the barricades of the NSAS protesters, the army was not there. We had as, as some problem in Mushi. The army did not go there. It was only around 7 o'clock or so in the evening that we now had the incidents of army shooting and army denial of shooting and army modification of the shooting. That's what has happened. Thank you, Mr. Ogunlana. Unfortunately, we've uh, run out of time. I wanted to ask you on your thoughts about the ICC preliminary investigation, but hopefully you'll join us on Newsday sometime again soon. Do enjoy the rest of your day.